Okay, we're recording. Welcome everybody. My name is Eric Johnson, creator of Teamsy. Very excited to be with you tonight. How many of you guys are already using Teamsy? At least in a free trial. A couple of you? Some of you are thinking about it, I can tell by your face. Okay, that's cool. I'll, I'm gonna show you Teamsy in a minute. Um, it's an amazing tool. It's gonna help you do everything you need to do to build your business in less than an hour a day, okay? Um, you don't have to plan, you just turn it on and go. That's the cool thing. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit, but before I get started, first I'm gonna teach you a little bit about relationship marketing, which is the philosophy Teamsy's based on. Those of you guys who have visited our website, you may have seen my video about how you never have to be an icky salesperson to build this business. And that's because we teach relationships. The main reason we built Teamsy is because I was looking for something to help me in my business that was relationship-based and I couldn't find anything out there. In fact, <laughs> I come from um, business coaching myself. I'll tell you guys that story in a little bit, but I couldn't find anything based on relationships. Even when people say it's all about relationships, they really weren't. They were about um, the whole go for no philosophy. You know what I mean? Just like, blasting people and hoping to find somebody interested, which personally I couldn't do. And I know I'm, I know that I'm not alone now that we've attracted 60,000 people to Teamsy. I know I'm not the only person wired this way. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of training on relationship marketing. And then I'll take you into Teamsy. We'll set it up. I'll show you how to do it. And I'll show you how to crush your power hour, how to follow up like a pro, take somebody from a prospect all the way through to a person on your team. Um, and then we'll do Q and A. Sound good? Yep. Sounds awesome. Okay. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mute everybody for obvious reasons, but you can un if you feel the spirit move you and wanna say something or ask something, you can unmute yourself. Just click the little microphone, okay? All right, let's go in here. I've got a presentation here. Here we go. All right, you guys see that? Great, how to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. So a little bit about my backstory. I come from the coaching and consulting industry. I've been a professional business coach for most of my grown-up life and um, helping people build their business by relationship. I stumbled into network marketing by accident. I found some products that helped me. I lost a lot of weight, got healthy, and I was just naturally sharing them. How many of you guys, that's kind of your story? So once I realized there was a really great opportunity for network marketing as uh, an additional stream of income for myself, I started looking for the tools that would help me do it. As a coach, I knew I needed to leverage my time to be efficient. And I knew that there were tools in other industries that help people do that. I couldn't find anything in ours, and as I mentioned a minute ago, nothing based on relationships, so we built it. That's kind of how Teamsy came to be. So let's get into this relationship marketing thing. What is relationship marketing? Okay, relationship marketing, by the way, is not selling things to the people you know. A lot of people think that's what it is. Um, sure, those pe the people you know may benefit from your products, but that is not the point of relationship marketing. It's about building relationships as your marketing plan, if that makes sense. Okay, but first I want you guys to get this. Relationship marketing is a lead generation system. A lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer inquiry or interest into the products or services of a business. I know it's like a dry business school definition, right? But you need to understand something at the beginning of our talk tonight, and that is that your business is not marketing and selling amazing nutritional supplements or tower gardens or any of the great products you guys represent. You are in the lead generation business. That is your business. Your business is to generate new leads for your business, okay? But here's another important principle that goes along with that. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So your business is to generate new leads. In other words, meet new people. So you can develop relationships with them. That's really how simple this business is. And if you keep your focus there, you're going to have a full pipeline forever. Okay. What we do with those relationships is we turn them into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. Okay, we turn relationships into advocates. How many of you guys are advocates for probably, well, you don't have to raise your hands because I know you are. You're all advocates for probably a dozen different products or companies that you're not getting paid for, right? Just because you love it, because you, they've, they've given you some sort of great value. And that's what we're gonna do with your relationships. The traditional approach in this industry, guys, is you churn through the people you know looking for someone who's interested, right? And you throw everyone else away. With relationship marketing, Everyone who's not interested today, over time, we turn into our advocates. 
nobody gets thrown away, nobody gets wasted, no relationships get damaged or harmed in the process. Make sense? Okay. If I have time, I'll tell you the story of Shasha, my best customer ever in my business. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Next principle. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Another way to say this is, if you're a jerk, this ain't gonna work. Okay, if you're a jerk, this ain't gonna work. Have you guys come across anybody in this industry who's less than trustworthy? Probably. Let me put it another way. Maybe you haven't had that personal experience. Have you met, noticed that people sometimes are guarded and uh, suspicious and skeptical when you present your business opportunity to them? Why do you think that is? Because in this industry, there has been generations of trickery going on. And, and the, the traditional approach, the 1975 sales approach that is still being taught, damages trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust, but trust makes the work fun. If, you, if someone trusts you even just a little bit, you don't have to convince them or sell them. You don't have to do anything icky. You can get right to helping them. It also takes the ickiness out of the sales process. With trust, you never feel like an icky salesperson. Nobody ever feels, you never make anyone feel icky. Also, you get to go for yes. Instead of going for no's, you're going for yes. And I'll show you guys with teams that you work through everybody you know over time. Some will be yes now. Some might be yes down the road years from now. Who knows? How do you build trust? So it depends on trust, but how do you build it? I'm gonna share with you guys the four essential ingredients to building trust, okay? The four essential ingredients to building trust. I know I'm going quickly, I've got a lot to cover. We are recording it, but um, I will hopefully give you time to get these notes down. The first one is chemistry. Number two is character, character. Number three is competence, competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right, let me just go through these really quickly with, e with each one. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? The easiest way for me to put this is, it's very hard to do business with someone you don't like. True? Yeah. And so we, we strive to find common ground. The cool thing is you have common ground with every person on the planet. Unfortunately, it feels like most people are spending their time figuring out and identifying where they differ from others. Have you noticed that? Especially on social media. As a business owner, your job is to find common ground and find ways to relate to everybody. Okay, number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Please notice my definition of character. It's not something intrinsic that you have. Character is something you do. It's an action in your life. Okay, you need to demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Number three, competence. Really, it really is, but some, for some reason my computer is not advancing it for me, hold on. Come on computer, take away all of my momentum. Here we go, let's try this again. Number three, competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Competence is when you demonstrate you are good at what you do and you are a business person. I need to know, can you help me with the specific uh, challenge that I have in my life, right? Do you know enough about your product to help me, to give me the right products to help me? And then are you the person that I will trust to mentor me in this business? There's two pieces to competence in our business, your product competence and your business competence. I need you demonstrating that to me. Now, just really quick before we move on, Anyone on the call new or new-ish, somewhat new? A couple of people, okay. So when you're new, you don't have the competence. A lot of times you don't have it, at least not to the level of folks like these guys who've been doing it for years and years and years, right? Have you ever heard somebody say, fake it till you make it? Have you guys ever heard that phrase, fake it till you make it? Okay, here's my advice, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, especially because you're talking to a lot of people who already know you and they know all the silly things you've done in your life. <laughs> they know you're faking it. Okay, so you don't need to fake it. Again, with relationship marketing, we don't do anything that's disingenuous ever because one tiny fracture in the trust relationship takes a lot of work to overcome and rebuild. Have you guys ever, ever violated the trust with a close relationship and realized how long it took to rebuild that? Huge. 
And especially when you're coming in network marketing where there's already distrust, there's already, mis you know, people already not trusting of you. And so you have to build it. Okay. So here's what you do. If you're new, lean into the competence of your team, lean into the competence of your team. Hey, I'm brand new, but I want you to know I'm part of the best teams in this organization. The experience, the know-how is unbelievable. We're gonna plug it into it together. Any question you have, I am one text message away from getting the answer from the absolute experts. So lean into the competence of your team if you're new, don't fake it. It doesn't, it's totally okay to be new. And teach your new people to lean into your competence until they have their own to demonstrate. All right, real quick principle on these three points before I move on to number four. People, when, when someone's gonna do business with you, they only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me and are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me and are you good at what you do? By the way, this is a little secret weapon here. These questions, these are a subconscious question or a heart question, however you want to look at it. These are questions people don't think consciously, but they ask inside internally. This is the source of all objections in business are these three questions. As you build a relationship with people, you answer these for them at a heart level and objections stop happening. I was talking recently to a group of leaders um, in, in the boot camp, actually at Henry's Inn. And I was talking about how people would do crazy things like take a, a photo of their American Express card and text it to me and tell me just to put it in order for whatever they thought I needed. Can you imagine that? Have you guys ever had it? But that is what happens when you build trust and people, these are not an issue because they're just like, okay, you have, I know you can help me. Here's my credit card, order what I need. And then tell me what I, tell me what I'm getting. <laughs> it's like, I'm a little uncomfortable with this, but okay, you got everything. <laughs> the whole catalog. No, just kidding. All right. Next consistency. Number four, consistency. Okay. Principle on this one. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. I probably, you probably all already understand that being consistent is the number one, one way to build trust with somebody, right? Do you guys have kids? Any parents? True with raising kids, right? Being consistent. The cool thing about it is being consistent builds trust, but it also, attracts people to you. Consistency is like some sort of amazing thing that people want and they feel as elusive to themselves. When they see you being consistent, they see it, they respect it, and they want it, they want to be around it. So you're building trust with people and you're attracting people to you. How many of you have ever been told that you are inspiring? Have you been told that? Like you're such an inspiration. I'm so inspired by you and what you do. And you think it Ask my, ask my spouse about that one. Ha ha ha. Right. Um, they don't know that you put your pants on backwards in the dark this morning in your bedroom and things like that. But here's the thing. They see you being consistent and that's what's inspiring them. Whether it's just being consistent about your healthy choices, the lifestyle that the juice plus lifestyle that you've adopted. Um, you know, whether it's sharing your story, whatever it is, People see you being consistent and they want to be near it and it, they, they respect it. And that is why it is so important to, do, to be consistent, to be a product of your product. How many of you guys would say you're consistent as a product of your, of your product, using your products and sharing the story? Okay, good. How many of you would say you're consistent doing things like sharing your story on social media, posting, things like that? A couple people, good. So here's the real checkup from the neck up. Oh, wait, I forgot. I got to give you a book. This is one of my favorite books. Got to give you at least one book recommendation on this call. Influence the Psychology of Persuasion here. I've got a copy here, but I think it may look different now. I've had this a few years. It's by Robert Cialdini. Anyone read this book? This book is amazing. It's a little bit, okay, I'll warn you. It can be a little bit dry at times because he is not, he's like a college professor. He's not writing for bestsellers. However, his stuff is so good that all of his books are, be are bestsellers. That's how you know you've got something smart, right? When you can write for college uh, students and everybody still buys the book. Um, influence of Psychology Persuasion. This principle I paraphrase from there. I highly recommend you put that on your, on your personal development list, guys. But I want to give you your checkup from the neck up. Are you consistent with your relationships? 
Are you consistent with your relationships? So, you know, I know we're doing good things like using our products, posting on social media, but are you as consistently in touch with people? Okay, now I'll just, just full disclosure, when I first started my business, I had um, my career required me to network a lot and meet lots of people and serve them at a deep level. And so I had a very responsive network when I started. So I could post something on Facebook or Instagram and I would get people to purchase just from a post. They would say, yes, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. But I want you guys to know that even if you have some success doing stuff like that, it's like a one it's, it's like less than 5% of the people that you're connected to who actually are responding to your post. Have you noticed that? The rest of them are watching you. They're just watching you like you're a TV show. And a lot of them enjoy the show, but they don't feel like they're part of it. And they won't until you actually reach out to them. And this is my principle on this one, which is people won't believe you until they see you. They see you leading this life. They think it's amazing. I mean... You guys are a perfect example. Off sailing around in your boat, free. I mean, the freedom, the ultimate freedom, right? Juice Plus supports it all. But it, that's an amazing show to watch. But if I haven't heard from you personally, I don't really think you're inviting me. They won't see you till they believe you. If I haven't heard from you since high school, it's just a nice show I'm watching. You got to remember relationship building is a contact sport, which means you need to be in regular contact with people if you want to have a relationship with them. Sorry, my thing, my thing, um, right when I was getting to the good stuff, stop working. All right, here we go. Here's my principle for you. This is the central principle of tonight. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Eric, when are you going to tell us how to sell this stuff? <laughs> Honestly, I am right now. It's just a little different probably than you're used to doing it. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Real quick example on this, and, and then I'll jump into Teams and we'll start showing you the software. Um, how many of you guys have ever received a really great card from somebody that you care about? Like with where there was empty white space and they wrote a message. You guys ever get a card like that? And do you, are you like me? Do you get emotional when you read those sometimes? I, it like pulls on your heartstrings. So when you get a really good card, the kind that really touches your heart, after you've done reading, after you're done reading it, what do you do with it? Do you just crumble it up and throw it away? How many of you guys throw away those cards? Anybody? You guys keep them somewhere special to the point where your spouse is like, can we get rid of some of these cards? Seriously? <laughs> right? I need a place to put my socks. It's full of cards. It's full, so funny how we hold on to those. In fact, when people pass away, a lot of times what's treasured most by their family are what? Their cards and letters. Isn't that true? It's amazing that something like that can have a, a lasting impact. Now, another example. Have you guys ever received one of these? This is a happy birthday postcard. You ever get one of these? This one's from my insurance agent, my life insurance agent, right? Which is one of those things like you hope you, you spend money on something that you hope you never need, right? Well, my wife might, might hope we need it someday, but we'll see. All right, just kidding. So this, you get one of these. When you get one of these, does this go in the special card place? How many of you guys throw these away pretty much instantly? This has no value. Why do you think this has no value? It looks like it's even handwritten. See, he did with that handwriting font. By the way, just a little side note. The message is, I want to thank you for your business and the opportunity to help your life go right. The only way he can help me is if I die, right? I'm just saying. Okay, this has no value because it took no time. That's the difference. He invested no time, probably had an assistant put this together. This took no time, has no value. It goes right in the trash can. In fact, if you're like me, I, we enter the house through the garage and I have a trash can in the garage before you get into the house where the junk mail goes, doesn't even make it out, like a little recycling. Okay, no value because it has no time. You have to invest time. And, and when you invest a little time handwriting a card, it lasts forever because it's so rare. 
Think about it. When has anyone invested undivided attention into you lately? It's so rare. Now, I'm not saying you need to be writing letters and cards all the time. However, that should be part of your marketing plan because people will never throw those away. So find reasons to send people notes and cards. But just sending somebody a message on Facebook or texting them directly makes a huge impact because nobody does it. Nobody just says, how are you? I'm going to show you guys, by the way, how you can do it super fast and efficiently in Teams in a second. But I just wanted you to understand how impactful it is to hear from somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Let's get back in here really quick. Next slide. This is my last slide. Don't worry. So you need a system. You need a way to stay in contact with all your relationships, right? How to manage your list and how to stay in contact with everybody consistently. Also know when to contact them. Some people you're going to be in contact more often than others based on your relationship. How do you manage all that? Also know what to say so you don't get stuck wondering, oh, what do I say to start this conversation? You get stuck in analysis paralysis all day long and message one person. Has that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> Totally. So you just need some easy ways to start your conversations and um, make sure that you have a system so nobody falls through the cracks. Right? Um, I'm going to teach you guys how to follow up in a little bit and you will realize that probably um, people that you thought just weren't interested actually fell through the cracks because you didn't have a system and they very likely will sign up later with somebody else. But not after today, right? Okay. Let's just jump in real quick to Teamsy. Let me share the the other screen. Let me show you how to do this. We're going to set it up really quick. Um, which team's here? It is. Okay, you're looking at my Teamsy dashboard. This is the Juice Plus version customized for you guys. If you're not already using Teamsy, quick action step go to teamsy.com and get a 30 day free trial. It's free for 30 days. We don't require a credit card or anything. Um, if you don't like it, it just closes down after 30 days. If you do like it, continue on and get a subscription and we'll help you build your business. Okay, so 30-day free trial. Get that going. Let your team members that aren't on this call know about the 30-day free trial. So when we set this up, when you first log into your free trial, you'll be dropped into the setup wizard, which helps you set it up pretty easily. So I'm going to go to the setup wizard here from this little menu up here on the top right and relaunch it. Okay, in the setup wizard, we are going to do three things, okay? We're gonna set an income goal, we're gonna create a powerful why, and we're gonna get all our contacts in so they're in one place, super mega organized. Okay, cool? Let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is set an income goal. You'll find a blank box, I just want you to put a number in. I put $150,000 as my number. This is the income level you'd like to be, um, this is your income level you would like to be at a year from now. Make sense? Okay. I just, I want to give you guys a warning. I just got a um, message on my computer that my internet's unstable. If it drops, I'll come back on. So don't go away, okay? We had a drunk driver hit the uh, transform. That's okay. All right, let's jump back in. Is my microphone sound okay? All right, make sure it went to the right microphone. So here's Teamsy again. Okay. So finding your why, Let's let me take you through my story really quick. Why did you become a distributor? And you guys just go through these on your own, go through this process. Why did you become a distributor? Why did you join the business? Now in my case, I found some products, I lost a bunch of weight and people were asking me about it all the time. And what'd you do? You look great, what did you do? You look healthy. And I would tell them. My wife finally said, hey, Eric, get paid for that. <laughs> so I did, I just listened to my wife. That's why I became a distributor. Next question, what do you hope to accomplish? All right, so start thinking about this as, as I'm telling you my story. What do you hope to accomplish? When I signed up, I wanted to make $500 a month extra money. That was it. $500 a month extra money. Anyone relate to that? Yeah, next question. Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? I wanted to save it. I wanted to save $500 a month. That was my goal. I just wanted to put it in the bank. Now, just to give you some context on this, there's always context. So ask people when they tell you why. Always ask them why, why, why. I hadn't saved money. My wife and I, um, we went through a tough time through the recession. Anybody go through a tough time through the recession? Yeah. So my business was coaching people in their business. Specifically, I worked with real estate people and mortgage people, the two people who immediately lost their income in the recession, right? And it was a very scary time because it, 
our business grew like 40% a year for eight straight years. And then it was gone overnight. And I had to find work in a different industry, bluff my way into a job, but I, we were blessed. I found work pretty quickly, but we used up our savings. We just barely made it through that recession by the, by our fingernails. So fast forward a couple of years, the economy improves. I get, I get my job back at my old company. Actually it was a better job promoted position, making more money, but yeah, I still haven't been able to put anything in the bank, not a penny. So now I'm coming into this network marketing thing. It had been almost seven years that I hadn't saved a dime. I don't know, anybody relate to that? You don't have to raise your hand, but I know you probably, most of you guys probably do. And I thought to myself, man, if I could just put some money in the bank, it would feel so good. All right, next question. What would achieving this mean for you and your family? The truth is, is I, I dreamt of buying a new home for my family. I wanted to buy a new home for my family and I felt like if I could save money long enough, I could make that a reality. Um, we had outgrown our home. My wife and I have four kids and two, um, at the time, we had two big dogs. One's passed away since then. Now we have one big dog. Um, but our dogs were like 115 pounds. It was just a lot of people in a small home and, um, and there was nowhere to go. I, I wanted to come home and work from home leave my career and work from home and build my business. But there was nowhere, I, there was nowhere to go. We didn't even have a bedroom. Our bedroom was the, also the nursery for the baby. So my wife had a nice walk-in closet and I thought to myself, man, we could make a nursery out of that walk-in closet, babe, and have some privacy, but she didn't go for that. So I just wanted to buy a new home for the family. That was what would I, so just so you guys can track with me. I signed up kind of like, okay, sign me up. I might as well get paid to refer people to this company all day long. I'll make some extra money. And in five minutes, I'm thinking, wow, maybe this will help me buy the new home for my family that I want, right? It's starting to get deeper. Next question, why is that meaningful? How does this make you feel? Why is that meaningful? How does this make you feel? All right, just really quick, let's be honest. How many of you guys heard that last question? You were like, I hate questions like that. That's me, by the way. I hate questions like that. Whenever you get to the good stuff in personal growth, it's the stuff that makes you squirm a little, right? The truth is, is when I really thought about buying a new home, I thought it's kind of shallow, right? I mean, it's kind of materialistic, somewhat, right? I mean, is it meaningful? It's not like I'm changing the world, but the truth is, is when I really started thinking about how it made me feel, I, I had kind of a blinding flash, the obvious. The home was representative. It was symbolic of my family. See, it wasn't really the house, though I did want a new house. You always want a new house. Isn't that the case? Like I'm in the bigger house now and I want a new house. It's just, so that's not the, that's not the meaning. The meaning was the family. I, I was, my family, I love my family and I just wasn't part of their life. I just wasn't part of it. I would get up in the morning, uh, you know, before dawn, get ready for work. I'd kiss my kids goodbye in their pajamas, still in bed, say goodbye, go to work, Right. That was my job, work, provide. I went to work, did a great job. I loved my job, did great. I was good at it. I would come home in the evening. My kids had already had dinner without me, getting ready for bed. I would help them get into bed. That was my job. Good morning and good night, dad. They were growing up and I wasn't part of anything that they were doing. And it was, it, it was a bummer, total bummer. I wanted to be there for them. I didn't want to just provide income. I wanted to be part of their life. And I started realizing as I was going through this process, the home was symbolic of the life I really wanted with my family. And um, I also wanted to be free of this worry that I was gonna get laid off again, that, that uh, a recession would come or whatever. And you know, I, I saw how easy it was for a company to let go somebody that was crucial the day before. And uh, talk about insecurity. How many of you guys worry about that? You have a job and you worry about that kind of thing. I didn't want to worry about that. So as I'm going through this process, I kind of had this big aha moment and I wrote my first why statement. I'm going to share with you my why statement. It's actually the sample text in Teamsy. So when you do this, you'll see my why statement that I wrote. And can you believe this guys? This was only three years ago. This story I'm telling you was three years ago. It blows me away when I think about this. Okay. So my why. This is the sample. Hold on, I got too many screens open. Where are you? Google Chrome, there it is. My why. Oh wait, I've got a bunch of stuff typed over. Let me get rid of that. To create a life where I never have to worry about money again, 
I enjoy quality time with my family and I'm present for my children on a daily basis. I'm healthy and full of energy. Okay, this was my why statement. This last box where it says my why, you put your why in there. Everything else is just notes. This is the part that matters. When you click continue, it will publish it to your dashboard of, your, of Teamsy. Every day when you log into Teamsy, I recommend you read this out loud to yourself. Once you have your why statement written down, it's a game changer, okay? Now you have a reason. And I have to tell you something, 500 bucks extra money every month is really easy to leave on the table. But when it comes down to creating a life where I don't have to worry about money again, where I get to be with my kids and my wife every day, that changes everything. And when I have a system like Teams that lets me do everything I need to do in 20 or 30 minutes, I really can't come up with an excuse that's more important than this why. Does that make sense? It confronts you. Now, I just went through this with um, my bootcamp group. I highly recommend that you take this wide that you write in Teamsy. Also put it down on a piece of paper and tape it to the mirror in your bathroom where you brush your teeth so you see it twice a day. That will also remind you to get your booty into Teamsy and connect with people today. Okay, so I just gotta share this with you guys. What's really cool about this is, um, when I did this, and you, once you get that, once you type something in there, your why, whatever it is, when you hit continue, it publishes it to your dashboard. Okay. I just want to share with this really quick with, with you guys. I know I've spent some time with, with my technical challenges. When I wrote this, why it changed everything within three months, I had left my corporate job and I was home working on my business. And it was a leap of faith, but I knew I could do it because I had this reason to. And some of you guys know the story. I had nowhere to, I'm, I already told you there was nowhere for me to work. So I went to Home Depot with the little bit of money I had and I bought a shed. You know the sheds they sell out in front of Home Depot? Like you're supposed to put your lawnmower in them. I bought one of those. I had them dropped, dropped in my backyard on the dirt, just straight on the dirt. Right? I was like, this is, this is going to be like this in two years, but I don't care. I ran an extension cord out, drilled a hole in the, in the wall plywood wall, ran the extension cord through, plugged my computer in. I built a desk out of some, out of an old um, closet door and a pallet. And I started building my business in the shed. We called it the shed quarters. Okay. And it's so funny. It's, if you guys will, if you guys will in, indulge me for a second, I'll show you a picture. Cause I just found one the other day and um, of my partner, Mike Lopez and I in the shed quarters. Let me see. Where is that thing? I just had it up see if I can get it. And so anyways, the last, the last bits of money that I had, I bought um, a shed and a, and a laptop computer. The two things I felt like I needed to build my business. And I started doing it. Where's that shed quarters picture? Well, I know I have it in my group. Hold on. I got to show this to you. This, this is worth seeing, right guys? You want to see this? Events. I know I put it in here. Here we go. All right, let me share my screen again. Here's the shed quarters. For those of you guys who are thinking about this kind of stuff, you just got to make it happen. The why makes it happen. Here's my partner, Mike and I, in the shed quarters on my homemade whiteboard in the background because you know whiteboards are expensive. You know what I used? You know the tile board you buy for $13 a sheet at, at Home Depot that you put tile on in your shower? It's whiteboard. I, I cut it into pieces and I screwed it up on all the walls inside my shed. So you can see in the background, my notes on this new idea, Team Z. You can see Team Z in the background. Three years ago, man, three years ago. Do you know how hot and sweaty it was in that shed in the summertime? I would do trainings like this and it would just be pouring down on me, the sweat. Three years ago. Okay. Hopefully that inspires you guys. Don't skip the my why. And if you bring somebody on your team who doesn't want to talk about the my why, doesn't want to get into that stuff, just know, okay, great. Don't put a lot of energy in that person. They're going to probably quit or they're not going to build the business. They might be a great customer, right? I mean, you need a whole bunch of people. You need a whole bunch of distributors in your business that are just uh, customers. That's fine. But I'm talking about your builders. Okay, the last step here is to get your contacts into Teamsy. You're going to get 
Um, if you've got a business already going with Juice Plus, you're going to go to your back office. There's a video here that explains it, um, and my team can walk you through if you get stuck on this. But you're going to get your distributors list and your customers list imported into TMZ. If you're new, you don't need to do this because you don't have it. The next thing you're going to do is get your Facebook friends list imported into TMZ. This is your best place to start, Facebook friends list. First of all, it's easy to connect with people on Facebook. And Facebook Messenger has the highest response rate of any form of communication right now on the planet. Isn't that crazy? People hate it if you call them, but they'd be happy to respond to a message on Messenger. All right, unless they're on a boat somewhere, then it might take them a week to respond to you. But there's not that many people doing that, so it's all good. All right, so once you get all of your lists, all of your contacts into Teams, the one place, super mega organized, there's one more step for setup. Well, this is where you do your import. Okay. I'm going to skip the wizard. By the way, if you want to import a list at any time, um, you just go to your team page and hit the import button. Okay. And that brings you right back to that page. If you're putting somebody in one at a time, you just click this little purple circle guy up here and you just add one person in. Okay. Easy, super easy. Now, once you've done a bulk import, let's say you put your Facebook friends in there. Um, and now you want to get ready to do your power hour. There's one more step in setup and that is ranking them. See how everybody here on my list has a rank, a number? Okay, so I'm gonna to go to team again and show you this. The team page is where your CRM is. That's where everyone lives. The whole list is here. You see the whole list. Everybody I know is in here. Now, after you do a bulk import, it's gonna ask you to rank them. See how Maynard has a two-star rating? Just like you've rated something on Amazon or Netflix or something. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in rank mode. It's automatically in rank mode after an import. And what you do in rank mode is you go down your list, and you just, everyone's a three to start. They default to three. And you're just gonna rank people. Maybe maybe Hamilton's a five. Boom, I'll make him five. You just click it. Or maybe he's a two. You change it by clicking it, okay? This is important because the rating system, the star rating system adds priority to your relationships. And this is how Teamsy creates your list for you every day. You see, you set it up once with this process and you don't ever, don't ever have to plan your power hour. It just says who's up next today. It tells you, hey, Eric, connect with these five people right now. Okay? Now let me explain to you what these stars mean and then we'll get started. A five star is somebody most likely to become a customer or a distributor or they're an existing customer or distributor that's a rock star. Okay, these people will show up every 30 days on your list. All right, another easy way to remember five stars, these are your favorite people too, just the people you like the best, okay? Like your mom should be a five star, maybe. Maybe she's a four star, I don't know. It depends on your relationship with your mom. She, she should be a five star, but if your mom is a four star, don't tell her, <laughs> okay? Just tell her you forgot to call her last month. Okay, four stars is somebody likely to become a customer distributor with a little nurturing or an existing customer distributor who's a consistent performer. Four star people come up on your list to connect every 60 days, okay? A little bit less often. Three star people, everyone starts as a three star. They could go either way. They show up on your list every 90 days, okay? Most of your list will be three stars. That's fine. Two star people are showing up every 120 days. So even at two stars, you're gonna talk to them three times a year. Is that four times a year, three times a year. My dad's the math professor, not me. All right, and then a one star. That's those people on your list that you're not, you're not, you're not reaching out to them. They're just there. You need their contact information for whatever reason. They're like in the freezer. Okay, so the ranking system, in a nutshell, prioritizes your relationships. You have to prioritize relationships if you ever want to prioritize time. If you don't prioritize relationships, you spend more time with the worst people and you get less results. You, get, you need to spend more time with the best people to get the most results. Make sense? 20% of your contact list will give you 80% of your business. That's true in any business. And so many times I, I talk to people, I'm gonna, by the way, you don't have to save this. When you're done, you, just, you can just navigate away at auto saves. I talk to people all the time, even leaders, that get stuck messaging 30 people a day and they're the coldest people they know. And they're like, I haven't had any results yet. So that's because you're starting in the freezer. You should have started with the warm people. Make sense? And the goal is over time to warm people up. Over time, you'll warm up everybody, but you want to be touching those warm people more often. Okay, so now we're ready to do our power hour. Okay, so you're looking at my Teamsy dashboard. How are you doing on time? <laughs> I got two minutes. Let's do power hour.
Okay, here we go. I'll show you a couple things on the dashboard. One, today's activities, these are the goals that we set and set up, right? You can see the prospect, customer, distributor goals, invites and ads goals. This is based on only today. We keep your focus on today because it's the only day you actually have control over. Make sense? Um, with Teamsy, it does not matter to me what your annual goal was. You should only, only be doing today's activities whenever you log in. If you miss a week, you don't need to do seven days activities. You just need to do today's goal again. Just do today's goal, okay? That will keep you from getting overwhelmed and you will do way more than you would have done and you'll still build momentum. Make sense? Okay. Um, now we've got our power hour right here. This box in the middle, this is where we're gonna do our power hour, okay? The left side is the who's up next lists. There's four, prospects, customers, distributors, and your follow-ups list, okay? On the right side, we log our activities. Pretty simple. So the first person on my list is Henry, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna message Henry on Facebook. I've got it, I've got it up here, right here, okay? I've got Facebook open right here. Let's see, here's Facebook. So I'm ready to message him on Facebook. So what we'll do is, before I message him though, how many times do you, do you guys ever get to the stage and you think, what the heck am I gonna say to this person? I know a couple of you raised your hand that you get stuck here sometimes. Um, and I used to too, I'll be honest with you. And I tried a bunch of different little things to start conversations and I found a few that worked amazingly well and I put them in here for you as scripts, okay? I'm not scripting your conversation, just helping you get started. So let me show you how to do that. Right here on the, in the connect box, it says script. See right there? I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna grab a Facebook script. And I've got a couple of easy connects. Here's one, it's, hi Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. <laughs> I had somebody that I was working with that said, Eric, I can't do it, she has an English accent. I wish I could do an English accent. Can any of you guys do an English accent? I wish I could. It sounds so bad when I try. She says, I would never say awesome. And then later she said, nobody's responding to me. I said, I don't know. It might have to do with the personality that would never say awesome. Just kidding. All right, you can change these a little bit if it doesn't sound like you. That's where I'm getting with this. So I copied that. Now I'm just gonna paste it in here and I'm gonna mess around with it because obviously Henry's name is not Jane. I need to change that, okay? Uh, this actually sounds like me, so I won't change it, but I'm going to add an emoticon because I love putting a little emoticon in there, just a little smiley face, okay? Boom. So I've, I've, in Teamsy, I have set it up the way I want it so that I don't accidentally send it with the wrong name in Messenger, which I've done dozens of times, by the way. Not a big deal, but for some people, some of you guys would just be mortified if that happened to you. I just, um, I call my kids by the wrong name, so I don't worry about it too much. I say, I call my kid by the wrong name too. Sorry I did that. So tell me more about what your day's doing. Just have a conversation. So this is now the way I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna send it. I don't know if you guys can hear my baby out there. She's calling my name. I'm gonna look up Henry, send him the message. There he is, okay? Let's message him. Boom, ready to go, okay? Sent. Easy. Now I'll just toggle back to Teamsy and I'm gonna finish logging it. That was a Facebook message and I'm gonna click the big blue log connect button. Logged. Sent. Look, I've got one done now. See, I've got one done. The next person on my list is Jay. I'm gonna use the same exact script, save some time. Okay, ready to go. I almost want to bring her in here so you guys can see her. I can hear her saying dad to outside my door. <laughs> She's 18 months. She's like the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life. Um, Jay, Lisa Swain, that's who we're doing now. There she is, okay. Oh, it's a little slow. I hope we're not about to lose internet again. So I'm gonna paste that one right in there. If I can get there, my microphone's in the way of my face. Come on, microphone. There it is. Can't see it. See the big microphone? Oh, you guys can't see it, but I've got this big microphone in my face. Okay, ready to go, sent. Okay, I sent her this message all day long because she works for me. <laughs> She's my guinea pig. Okay, so I log it, log connect, and I've got two done. Do you guys see how quickly I can go down the list? 
Now you can change up those scripts a little, but you don't need to overthink the scripts. That is just a script to start the conversation. And they'll be like, hey man, good, great to hear from you. What are you up to? And we'll have a conversation. Now, what's not included in tonight's training is how to have a conversation. So that you should be able to do on your own, I hope. Though that's not always the case, but um, we'll have to do another training for that another time. So now you're sending these messages out. You're gonna go down your list. In this case, the goal is nine prospects. I'm gonna send that message nine times to nine, the nine people as they come up on the list. Notice there's only five at a time. That's to keep me from getting overwhelmed. And every time I send a message, the list moves up one. Okay, I don't want you to get overwhelmed and I don't want you skipping. Just go down the list and send the message. It only takes a second. If somebody's on there that you really don't want to message, you should probably delete them. Okay. All right. When I'm done with my nine prospects, now be disciplined not to answer people if they start responding right away. You got to finish sending your messages first. Now when my nine are done, I'll jump to my customers and I'll start sending them messages. So Emlyn's next. I'll do the same thing. I'll go to scripts. This time Teamsy will give me customer scripts, right? How about this one? Hi, John. How are you enjoying products? So maybe I'll do it like this. How are you enjoying your tower garden? Send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. Okay, for example, of course, I got to change the name to Emlyn and send it in Facebook. You get the idea. And then when you're done logging all of your customer connects, you hit your goal there. And then you go to your distributors and you start connecting with your team. Oh, wait, before we do this, let me just tell you a couple things really quick. Do I have time to go into this? Just really fast. How many of you guys just sort of wish you were better at staying in touch with customers? Anybody feel that way? Yeah. It seems to be the most common thing, um, especially people who've been doing this a long time and have a lot of customers. They wish they were better at it. Uh, and that's because you know in your heart, you know, your number one job is take care of your customers, right? Take care of your customers. But a couple, there's a couple of really compelling reasons why you need to be in regular contact with your customers, regular contact, which is why you need a system like TeamZ. First of all, if you are in regular contact with your customers, they will order more products. This is just a fact. Anybody ever watch Game of Thrones? This is known. This is known. If you're in touch with people more often, they will order more products. Some people avoid customers because they're afraid that if they talk to them, they'll cancel their, their auto orders. And that's the wrong approach. The more in touch with them that you are, the more they will order. Okay? And they will stay, they will retain longer on their monthly reorders, their monthly auto, what do you guys call it? The auto ship type orders, the recurring orders. <clears throat> okay, that's the first principle. Um, in a situation like this where you've got a team coming on and looking at teams at the same time, if people actually use it for the 30-day free trial, I've seen teams increase team volume 30, 40% in, in one month just because people are suddenly in contact with customers. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. I know. Number two, how many of you guys have uh, at least one good customer now? Anyone? How many of you would like a new customer or two great ones this week? Do you guys know where to go find those people? Where is the best place to find a new customer? Do you guys know this? Your current customer. The best place to find a new customer is a current customer. If you have somebody using a product and loving it, what are they doing? Telling people about it. People talk about stuff like this. Do you guys do that? Absolutely. I'm here to tell you that if you have a customer, one customer who likes the products, they've already set other people up to buy them. They're already ready to. Did you know 85%, I don't care what you hear about advertising and all this stuff, 85% of all purchases in North America are by way of a recommendation from a friend or family member. The advertising and stuff helps, it gets top of mind, things like that, but the bottom line is your customers are talking to people already, based on that recommendation, they're ready to buy. So will it be from you? You need to be in touch with your customers and get introduced to the people they're talking to. Make sense? This is why you need something like this to stay in touch with people. And not just to say, hey, your, your order's about to ship, would you like to add anything to it? But just to say, hey, how are you? How are you enjoying things? Send me an update. What's been going on with you? How are you feeling? Did you, did you, did you revert back to your high blood pressure medication because you stopped using these great products? Or are you still feeling great? No, I'm just kidding. Well, that happens, right? 
I need to get back on it because now I had to get back on my medication. Yeah, you do. Okay, where am I? Next, your distributors. Okay, so you're gonna connect with your distributors the same way. You're gonna stay in touch with them, send them little messages, let them know that you're thinking about them. We called the product Team Z because it's about building your team. Okay, having a Facebook page for your group, getting on a live Zoom, those are nice, but they need to hear from you personally, especially as your team grows, especially if, as you have a large organization, your people need to hear from you directly. Okay, the two things that motivate people to produce more than anything else, you guys can look up the science on this if you like, there's lots of books on it. Making more money has never been shown to increase productivity in a human being. What increases productivity are status, and human connection. So what are you guys, what is Juice Plus good about doing? Status, right? You, your job is the human connection, okay? Your job is the human connection. You build your team as a family. People, people will flock, they will work, and they will do more for themselves because of that connection, okay? Prospects, customers, distributors. So now you've done it. In this case, it was 19 people, 15 minutes work. Easy, even for a beginner in Teamsy, okay? Now those messages are out and people are starting to respond. So now you're having conversations. You may need to set aside a little time later in the day to actually answer all those messages, right? So now you're having all your messages, you're connecting with people. And how do you get somebody onto the next list, which is the follow-ups list? So let me just give you an example. So I'm messaging back and forth, talking to Henry, right? And he's, I'm catching up with him. What are you up to? He's like, oh my gosh, we've been sailing up and down the coast of... Connecticut, it's been gorgeous, you know. Um, we're going to, I don't know, he's telling me the story, so cool. How about you, Eric, what are you up to? I tell him the story, well, you know, first I bought a shed, I'm working in the shed, it was pretty awesome. Um, it was a scary first year, but then we bounced back big and it's been amazing, I get to be with my kids every day and um, working from home and I don't, have a, I don't have to ever worry about being laid off. Like, you know, I'm telling him the story. He's like, wow, that sounds really interesting. I need to get something like that going so that I can stay in my sailboat forever. Henry, if you're interested in learning more, I'd be, I'd be happy to share some more. In fact, we've got an event coming up tonight. I don't know if you're gonna have an internet connection, but you can jump on this event. It's virtual. We'll learn more about the business opportunity. I can send you the link right now um, if, you, if you'd like to jump on and then I'll connect with you tomorrow and see if you have any questions. This is, that sounds perfect. Let's do that, great. So now, this is how I would do this in Teams, you guys. That's just one example of an invite, right? Is that something you might invite somebody to? Okay, great. So I'm gonna look him up now in the lookup bar at the top of the page because he's not on my dashboard anymore. Okay, that's gonna bring me to his record. Now in his record, I'm gonna click the big blue connect button that opens that connect box just like on the dashboard. Now this time, see where it says invite? Right here on the bottom left, I'm gonna click that. And instead of a connect, I'm gonna now move this to a specific type of invite. So let's call this a business opportunity meeting, okay? So now Teamsy knows I'm inviting him to learn about the business. This is more than just a conversation. He showed some interest, now I'm gonna invite him to something. So let's say I'm gonna email him the link, I send him the uh, virtual link, okay? Let's just call it that. Now before I log this, I need to set a follow-up. See right here where it says follow-up? Click that to set a follow-up. Now you can do some presets or you can go to a custom date, any date you want. But I'm gonna set it for tomorrow because that's when I told him I'd connect with him. Are you guys with me so far? Now I log connect. Notice that on his record, now there's a follow-up scheduled for tomorrow. If I go to the dashboard and look at my follow-ups list, there he is, due tomorrow, okay? Turns red when it's due, it's yellow when it's tomorrow, and it's green if you've it's, got two days and not worry about it. So. As I'm connecting with people, some of those conversations are gonna go nowhere. They're just gonna fizzle out. Some people won't even respond, but some of those conversations will be great and people will be interested and I will invite them to something. And those people go on my follow-ups list. At the end, every day when I'm doing my power hour, I'm sending out new messages to prospects, customers, distributors, whoever's up next. And then I'm going to my follow-ups list and I'm following up with everybody I've invited to something. That's my power hour. Half of it is my outgoing messages, my connects, and half of it is my follow-ups. Now it may take you, on your 30 day free trial, it may take you to week three before you're really sending invites. Does that make sense? But then now, if you're, it, once you get in the groove and you've been doing this a while, hitting those three, in, if you're hitting that goal of three invites a day, that's 15 people you're following up with 
a week. That is a full pipeline and a big business, you guys. You with me? <clears throat> now, let me show you how to do this in Teamsy. It's super easy. When I get to my follow-ups list, I come to Henry. I'm going to grab my scripts. By the way, did you guys, do you guys uh, think that I won't give you all your follow-up scripts? I put them all in here for you. How many of you guys, wait, before I show you this, how many of you guys have heard that the fortune's in the follow-up? You guys ever hear that? Okay. Uh, do you know the statistic that 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and the 10th follow-up? I see Jerry's nodding, Henry and Jen are nodding. Okay, you guys haven't heard that. 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. How many of you guys follow up seven to 10 times? Anyone? Is there anyone that does? I always get the, maybe one time I did that. Most people don't. Um, that's why uh, this many people do most of the sales in the world. Do you know that too? Okay, couple things, guys. I know why you don't fall 10 times. First of all, if you don't have Teams yet, you have got no chance of staying that organized, okay? But let's say you did. You still wouldn't because you're too worried about being annoying. Is that true? How many of you guys worry about being annoying? Like, you just like, ugh. Okay, so there is a way to do it without being annoying. I'm gonna teach you right now. There's two principles. Okay, I gotta go through this fast because I know I'm out of time. And then I'll show you how to do it in Teamsy. There's two principles, okay? I put 10 scripts in Teamsy for you that follow these two principles. So you can use those scripts and actually not be annoying. First principle is this. When you follow up with somebody, never ask them to do anything. That's annoying. Don't ask them to call you back. Oh my gosh, that's the most annoying ever. Can you call me? That's terrible. Don't ask them to do that. Don't ask them to call you. Don't ask them to text you. Don't ask them to RSVP for the event you've sent them 11 invites to. Don't ask them to complete the purchase that they left abandoned in the cart. Like don't ask them to do anything, nothing, okay? That is not the purpose of your follow-up. They know what you want. You're, you're following up, you had a conversation where you discussed what they needed to do, now you're just following up, okay? Number two rule is this. The message should be ideally sent in a texted format. Best is Facebook Messenger, second best is text. Don't send a voice message. Don't call them on the phone. Do you like it when your phone rings unannounced? Let's be honest. In the 80s, you loved it. Maybe even in the 90s, we used to talk on the phone for hours. Now it's like, who's calling me? <laughs> Society has shifted. Everyone hates talking on the phone. No, that's not true. Everyone hates getting a call unannounced. Don't call them, text them, and keep it short. They, won't, they need to be able to read it on the lock screen, on the notification screen. It has to be short enough they can see it as a notification because they're not gonna open it even. Why are they not gonna open the message? Do you guys do this? You do it. Because they're not gonna respond. You don't wanna open a message that you know you're not gonna respond to right now because they've, they'll have seen that you open it and think, what a jerk, she's not responding to me, right? So make it short enough they can see it on the lock screen. Why, Eric? But don't I want them to open it? Don't I want them to respond? Here's what I want you guys to understand. People won't respond. This is the way human beings are wired. If I had time, I would get deep into it with you. People are wired this way. They're not gonna to respond to the first five or six follow-ups. Most people will not even respond. Even when they're interested, even when they respect you, even when they're excited, even when they love you, even when they think you are the bee's knees, they won't respond. It's the way they're wired. This is why 80% of sales happen between seven and 10 because the following up process kind of helps rewire that subconscious to, to get the blocks off so they can get stuff done. Just keep following up, okay? Now, if you follow my two principles, you won't be annoying and they will thank you. They will say, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you for staying in touch. Thank you for following up. I really appreciate it. And they'll tell you all of the excuses they came up with for not responding over the past two months, okay? Let me show you how to do it in Teamsy. Are you guys with me? So I'm going to grab the script. I already started the process a second ago. I'm going to grab that script. I'm going to go to follow-up script. Follow-up number one. Hi, Jane. Just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? I'll copy that script. Boom. I'm going to come in here. We're going to send it to Henry. He might laugh if I call him Jane, so I'm going to actually change his name. I don't know him well enough to know if I can call him Jane yet. Okay. <laughs> So look, he's right here. I'll look him up again. Oh, look, I've already got it open. 
I would have just looked him up. There it is. I'm going to send the message. This is the follow up. Just checking in like I promised it would. What questions you have for me? Boom, sent. Log it in Teamsy. Now, always set the next follow up. I'm going to follow up again in two days. Okay. Always set the next follow up. That keeps them on your follow ups list. You want to keep them there. You want to just keep them there. So I, I don't even think about it. Do you see how long that took me? I'm not sitting here going, I wonder if Henry's going to purchase. I don't care. My job is to fill this follow-ups list and to go through and send the next follow-up. Um, in a couple of days, I'll come here. I'll look at this. I'll click on activity to see what I sent him last time. Great. There it is. I'll go back to connect. I'm going to go to my scripts. I'm going to get follow-up number two. Okay. I've got follow-up number three after that, then follow-up number four, follow-up number five. Follow-up number six. Here's the thing, guys. We want them to see these follow-ups. They're, they're kind of like a connect in that they're designed to make their day, remind them that you care, that you're here for them, and to keep you top of mind with a positive emotion. Okay? They're already excited about the product. They just, you just have to help them get through all the stuff in their life that's in the way. Make sense? So I'm going to keep following up, keep following up, keep following up, keep calling up. It might take two months, and that's okay because, again, as long as you're filling up your pipeline with people, it only takes a couple seconds to go to the next follow-up. And people are going to be amazed at how consistent you are. So now when Henry, I go into the back office, Henry is signed up. He's a distributor, whole deal, good to go. How do I finish him off? Not finish him off, but how do I, how do I take him off my follow-ups list, put him on my team and teams? All right, so I'll look him up. Here's what I'll do is click, first I'll click on sale and I'll just log that he, you know, converted. And I noticed that he bought a tower garden, so I'm going to tag that so I know what he bought. Okay, cool. And then what I'll do is where it says member type, he's a prospect. I'm going to move him over to distributor, personally sponsored. Boom. So now he's moved over to my team. He's no longer on the prospects list. He'll be on my distributors list and where I'll continue to build a relationship with him and stay in touch with him as a distributor. Make sense? Okay. Questions. I know you probably have some. Just unmute and ask. I have a question, Eric. Um, when I'm on my phone and I'm doing Teamsy, and I go from Teamsy to go do a text, yeah. when I come back to Teamsy, I have to re-enter my name. And even though I clicked Remember Me, I have to go through my password and everything again. So what am I doing wrong there? Because, I, I mean, if I go to Facebook and put a message or if I just go to do a text message, I always have to reopen Teamsy. And then I have to, you know, see if it'll come up. And then a lot of times the name that was up there is gone. Then I have okay. to refine that name. The good news is you don't have to do that. I'm going to share my screen and show you what to do. Okay. All right. Um, it says sharing is paused. Hold on. Let me stop share. Try it again. There it goes. Okay, you see my Teamsy screen? Uh huh. Okay, so what you don't want to do is go back to your home screen and push the Teamsy button again. Because every time you do that, it'll want you to log in. What you want to do is, do you have an iPhone? What kind of phone do you use, Judith? Yeah, I have an iPhone. Okay, so I'm using an iPhone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle between the apps. So um, in this, in my phone, I have an iPhone 10, so I would just swipe the bottom to go over to text. And then I would swipe back. So if I was going to connect with Carrie Ann, I'd go in here, I'd get a script. Now, if you have um, if you have another model iPhone, then you just double tap the little button on the bottom. And the no, I have a 10, so I don't understand. So I go, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so when you're, when you're in an app, there's a little black stripe at the bottom of the screen. And you just swipe your finger like this. And it toggles to the next app like this. Watch. Okay. So then what you'll do is I'll get the script to show you an example. Copy that script. Great. So I'm still in this, I'm still in this one with Carrie Ann. Right? Paste. Mm -hmm. Hold on my finger. Paste. Boom. Great. So there, now if I want to toggle it over here and send it to somebody, 
we're going to send it to you. I'll send it to my wife. <laughs> Sent. Okay, I'll toggle back to Teamsy. Log it. Done. Make sense? Okay, I'll work on that. Thank you. So what you want to do is toggle between the apps. Don't close the app and reopen the web page because every time you're opening a page in Safari, it's it thinks it's a new session. And right, right. Log in. Just toggle okay. back and forth. All right, thank you. Sure thing. Sure Eric, I don't have a question, but I just want to share. We love Teamsy. It's amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are days where we can do it or I can do it in a, an hour. But I think the biggest thing for me is where you've got the tabs where everything's categorized and preloaded. Mm -hmm. I can do it in stolen moments. I can do a 15 minute block in the morning and a 15 minute block. I don't waste any time getting reorganized. I can just right. pick up my phone and just do five messages. It's amazing to me how it, it's just brilliant. I absolutely love it. It's the best thing that's ever happened to our business without any question at all. I, I agree with that totally. And I haven't even done camp yet. I can't wait. To, I know, I can't wait to do boot camp. It's just this next month is crazy, so I can't do boot camp. But I, it has changed my life. I, I just I can't even tell you how much fun I'm having. I have a new guy that just came back into the business because I reintroduced myself to Team Z, and she got on Team Z, and she texted me today and said, Judy, I can't believe I'm having fun doing this again because of Team Z. Eric, well, and I have 5,000 friends on Facebook, and I have 8,000 names in my contact list. And I was just overwhelmed. I didn't even know where to start. And now it's like, oh, I know what to do. I get to say, hey, how are you? Have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> and then see what happens. And it's been amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. That's, that's yeah. why we didn't let you see 8,000 people on your dashboard. Exactly. Yeah. Five at a time. I appreciate that. <laughs> so people complain about that. You know, that's okay. Can't make everybody happy all the time. No. I have, I have a confession. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. I was trying to, when my computer went off, I had not plugged in. I mean, it wasn't plugged in. I didn't realize that. But at any rate, um, when I did my t trial period, I did not click on Facebook and transfer anything. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any responses. And I would mm. actually call up with friends and said, did you get anything? I know, this is funny. It's <laughs> me. It's, it's my ineptness at it's such media, anything that has to do with technology. And I'm like, no wonder I got no response. I mean, for 30 days, I did this off and on. And, you know, just, I thought I was getting everything done during the day. And I'd go in and put it in. And then I wasn't even sending messages. Oh, did you see me do that when he started talking? I mean, I'm like, what an idiot. So anyway, I'm just saying, um, well. hopefully I can figure this out. Um, you do have people that train while we're on here though, right? Yeah, I mean, now you're not alone in that. I just want you to know, see this little message right here? Yeah. We had to put that on there because you weren't the only one who did that. <laughs> so that'll, that'll take you to a page that explains oh that. So just so you know, don't feel, don't feel bad about that. But, um, oh look, I ended up back at Teamsy homepage. You get the idea. <laughs> but um, that's because Facebook doesn't allow anyone to use their app. You have to go, you have to go to Facebook to send a message, but okay. Um, but we, when we originally launched Teamsy, I just want you guys to know Teamsy was integrated with Facebook Messenger for six days, oh. and uh. it was two weeks before we actually let customers into it, and it was so clean and beautiful. And then okay. Facebook said, "Surprise! Nobody can interface with us anymore." Um, we didn't realize it at the time, but they were getting ready to take over the world, which they've now achieved. Uh, right. But, you know, more people use Facebook Messenger I live on than Messenger. telephones on a daily basis. Yeah. I absolutely live on Messenger. It's just, it's, it's become this lifeblood to my life. It's crazy. But, but Teamsy, I think the big thing is it allows you to stay in touch with so many people that you meant to stay in touch with. You just didn't have forgot, yeah. you know, you just yeah. didn't have the capacity. The system. And no system. And believe me, we have tried. We've been in this business for 27 years. We've tried every system, the go for no, the cold market, the you name it. And it, 
and they the, the relationship focus. I think your training is probably the best training in the industry because it's this it's heart centered. It's what we are as human beings. It's huge. Yeah. Really, it's really powerful. It's the way people. You know, the truth is, is that people want. It's the way we would want to be sold. Exactly. Right? And so sales, if you guys are nerds like me and do a lot of personal development reading, sales has changed a lot in the last 20 years. Sales used to be where the salesperson controlled the information. Mm -hmm. Right. And so because of that, a lot of it was withholding information from the purchaser. Right. Well, now the purchaser has access to all information. So instead, you need to become an, you're an advisor. You're not somebody who controls information. You're an advisor. But so much of what we're taught is still based on that philosophy of the salesperson's in control. You got to control the conversation. You have to create mystery. You have to, and all of these things are disingenuous and people right. smell it a mile away. The truth is, is they know they can, they've already compared your products to all of the competitors. Right. right. They've already looked at the prices. They already know what's available at Walmart mm -hmm. that, looks kind of like it and so it comes down to relationship it comes down to the trust you build and it comes down to you know what you can do with that relationship in the end so um and then then the truth true same of everyone that knows and trusts that person well we're terrible at that you know holding the cards close to your chest game anyway i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm no good at that so i'm not slick so it's me too well i you know and what are you going to do? Not everyone's going to do it this way, but we're finding our tribe and we're finding people who want to lead with their heart. And, and here's what I will tell you is you actually get better results this way. Okay. The 16 years I've been teaching people how to build their business by relationship. They are the top people in their industries. And a lot of times you see these people that are like the hardcore salespeople that they hold up. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not actually doing as much business as the ones who have the solid relationships. Um, they're just, they've got more peacockery going on. Right. I have to share with you, I got a message one day and I know that they were on Team Z. Hi Judy, how you doing? I hope you have an awesome day. And I text back and I said, don't you love Team Z? I do too. <laughs> and they, this is not laughing faces. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's People send me that message all the time. <laughs> <laughs> people send me that message all the time and I just and I tell them I'm having an awesome day thanks for checking in what are you up to yeah. it's all good the thing is is that um, somebody you might get that message from somebody who's not using Teamsy because it's not it's not like it's a special wording it's just basic right um, the point of me creating those scripts for you guys is to stop overthinking right the overthinking is what gets you into so much trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and with this process, you shouldn't, you, you know, you don't need to overthink. A lot of times you guys will overthink about the people who don't respond. How can you be thinking about silence? Mm -hmm. Think about yeah. the people who do respond. Don't worry about the people who don't respond. <laughs> who cares if they didn't respond? Maybe they had, to, maybe their car blew up today and they didn't, they couldn't <laughs> respond. They'll come up on Teamsy in two months, three months, message them again. Makes sense? All right. Okay, so I need to go. One last question. Any last question? I got to see the baby before she goes to bed. Yeah. yeah well, you thank sure you for thank your you time. So and thank you for developing this. It's awesome. Yeah, it's just been a game changer. So there's a, little, there's a little piece of the recording when I was on my phone that didn't get recorded. Um, yeah. So you'll miss a little piece of that, but I'll send you everything else a little bit later on. Right, Thank you guys for having me tonight. God bless you. Um, you. Hopefully we'll see you guys in Team Z. Get your 30-day free trial started if you have not already done that. Okay. Um, and do it's the $29.99 a month after that to subscribe to Team Z. Okay, so if you can get one sale you pay this in a month using Team Z, oh my gosh, if you're not, using, if you're not doing that, you're not using it, right. then you paid for it. Okay, and then once you're really in love, you can do a year in advance type thing, save a couple months um, off the tuition that way. Right. But I hope you guys will get in the free trial. Use it. Get some momentum going. Get your teams that are on, on the call with us. I appreciate you guys spending some time with me tonight. God bless you. Talk to you soon. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.